if you are defied, you should not come to me. As we read along, you will see different places where the Bible says, if somebody is defied, the person should not come into the holy place. And the holy place, as we know, unless there are people who don't understand, holy place is the house of God. For us to understand it better, we may not read this, but let's just write it for those who are writing. If you read the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 5, Joshua chapter 5 verse 15, you will see the encounter between Moses and God and the encounter between Joshua and a particular angel known as the commander of the host of God. Moses saw fire burning. A particular tree was standing. Fire was burning, but the leaves were not being consumed. Moses forever And Moses said, let me go and know what is going on there. As he was approaching the tree, the Lord called him and said, Moses, stop. Take off your sandals for where you are standing is holy. And I've said it here many times, what makes a place holy is the presence of the Almighty. It happened again during the time of Joshua. That time Moses had died. Joshua was moving the people of Israel to the promised land according to the command of God. And Joshua had an encounter with an angel known as the commander of the host of heaven. The angel appeared as a human being. A man standing on the way where Joshua was moving with the people of Israel. Remember the Lord said to Joshua, any place you step your feet, I give to you. He said, but it to be on the condition that you must meditate in the law day and night. Again, that you must be courageous and be strong. So when Joshua was on the move, he met this man standing and he drew out his sword and asked him, are you for us or are you against us? The angel said to him, Joshua, Joshua, I am the commander sent from heaven to help you and the people of Israel. But first of all, take off your shoes for where you are now standing is holy. And I've said this several times. That place was just an ordinary field. Joshua was moving, fighting, destroying nations. Joshua no nanu oko na akwato obodo di iche in order to end up in the promised land according to the promise of God. Oh welo na na nkwa dika nkwa chi neke se. Because the angel of the almighty who came in the name of the Lord stood on that ground. Mano bu mozi chi neke bia na afa chi neke guzo na ala ahun. The presence of God ebube chi neke purify that environment. Welo e ba ahun so and he said to Joshua, oh, he, Joshua take off your shoes you have, okay. for where you are standing is holy that was when Joshua discovered that he was not even challenging a human being that he was trying to challenge an angel who came down to help him but Joshua was a courageous man a man with a lion heart he was ready to fight him if not that he introduced himself praise the Lord hallelujah so we have to understand that when we talk about defilement Defilement is the absence of holiness. So we are preparing to meet with our Heavenly Father. In the book of um, Deuteronomy 16, verse 16 and 17, it says, Three times in a year shall you 
appear before me. He said, in the feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread, the feast of Shavuot, which people call Pentecost, and in the feast of Tabernacles, he said, you shall not appear empty. So, we, the Jews in the diaspora, we are joining our brethren in Israel, preparing to meet our heavenly father who gave a command that we should come before him three times in a year and you cannot come before God when you are defied that is the reason why we have to look into these areas that talks about defilement the nebulous have a perfect union or communion with our heaven father we have the quest, first quotation there in the book of Numbers 19, 21, and 22. Have you seen the place, page 25? Okay. C can we read as a class? Have you seen the place? All right. For the verse says, everybody, and it shall perpetual statutes unto them, and whatsoever the unclean person touches shall be unclean. And the soul that touches it shall be unclean until evening. You know, this place will be confusing to, to, to some of the Christians. I say some of the Christians because some Christians have started studying the law. I have come in contact, I have an encounter with one reverend father who met me and we were conversing and he said to me um i know that the sabbath day is the right day of worship then i said to him but why why can't you teach your members he said no we know the truth but our institution mana have put Sunday as the day of worship. So which means there are some Christians who know that the Sabbath day is the right day of worship. That is why I say some. So some people when they hear this, this quotation may be confusing to them. Because some people have the understanding that Jesus or the death of Jesus have put an end to anything, the laws of God. Okay, let's go down a bit so that we can understand more. This is a commandment which shall be binding upon every soul. Both of Israel and other nations. If you read the book of Numbers chapter 15, verse 16 and 29. It's Numbers. Numbers 19. Sorry. Yes, Leviticus. Sorry, Numbers 15, 16 and 29. Mm. This topic has a wide implication and application. And we are poised at exposing several ways in life through which one may contact defilement or become contaminated or ritually unclean. It, it will be seen that the conditions of defilement can occur through five major factors. Remember, everybody seated here today, we are all here because we are preparing for the feast of Passover and unleavened bread. Our brethren who left different countries and they have come down here, they left their countries because they read it in the book of Deuteronomy 16, 16 and 17, that God, who created the heavens and the earth, has invited his people or his children to come and celebrate this feast. 
we bi agugo na kwa the trouble still this time okuri this e be chine kenya ni uese na iga agbako bu bo le to na ro ife chine ko fufe so now that we have come together we have to be able to understand how do we meet with him we have seen it that it's not a new thing the people of the time of jesus that is yeshua they did same before the passover they went they sanctified themselves if we go no abori ho fo no bo sinke yeshua israel na ndo to an ebuzo je jerusalem ido nwe ha so tutu meme we we are talking about a holy god Remember, is this same God that the people of Israel asked Moshe? They said to him, We want to meet with him one on one. We, we are tired of every day you are telling us, God said this, God said that. Moshe went to our Heavenly Father in prayers and said to him, the people of Israel, your children, said they want to have one-on-one -on -one converse or chat with you. So, the Lord said something. That is why I want us to link with this want us to link with this defilement. He said to Moshe, tell them, since they have decided to come to me, let them purify themselves for three days let them wash their clothes as we read along you see washing of clothes which many people may be seeing as nonsense he said to them men should abstain from their wives i'm not talking about girlfriend or boyfriend here the lord said your legally married wife abstain from her for three days, since you want to meet with me. He said, you shall make sure you purify yourselves for three days. Then on the third day, after you must have done all these sanctification process, then come to me. And he said to them, at the state of this sanctification, when you come, don't touch the mountain because the Shekinah glory of the Almighty will rest on the mountain. No, no, don't go, don't Let me even ask the world this question. Do we still worship the same God of Moses? I can or do, we do we have a new God that we worship today? Because the way the world is seeing God, they are seeing him as a new God. A diluted God. A God that you can meet anyhow, anyway, anytime you want to meet him. God said to Moses, Moses, when they must have sanctified themselves, let them come. But let them still abstain from touching the mountain. For my glory will rest on the mountain. Then Moses told the people. At the end of the day, we know how it ended. They were not even able to even go close. Because of the great signs that they saw. Because of the earthquake, the trembling of the, the, the land that they experienced. So we are not talking about defilement. We are preparing to go and meet with him. At what state will you reach before you now say, I am fit to meet with him? It calls for study. You have to sit down and listen. This lecture of today is not a motivational lecture. It is pure teaching. It's a divine teaching that will lift you up from the level you are to the highest level. The book of John chapter 4 verse, sorry, Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says, come up higher 
that you may see greater things. When you come up higher, you will be able to experience the Shekinah glory, the favor, the grace of the Almighty. Because the God we are talking about is a God that changes not. We sang a song here. Though the world may like to change him, but he is a God that changes not. Let me even sing this one again unchangeable god unchangeable god if you know the song join me unchangeable god unchangeable god he's unchangeable god unchangeable god unchangeable god unchangeable god unchangeable god unchangeable god he's unchangeable god unchangeable god unchangeable god god unchangeable god our god is a god that changes not the same god of yesterday he is the same today and will remain the same forever shout hallelujah now let's look into the five different factors that will enable us to understand the areas we, his children, will walk on so that we'll be able to find favor before him. If you don't understand this message, it may affect your relationship with him in this feast of Passover. And I want our reader to be Steady, because there are many quotations you will be reading from now, though we will be following you as you read. Leviticus 15 verse 18. Are we there? Still on page 25. Hmm. Please read for us. Peace in the name of Hashem. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 15 verse 18, I read. Verse 18. The woman also with whom man shall lie with, seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. The scripture teaches that one can be defied through the discharge that occurs in sexual contact. I know this may be strange again uh, in the sight of the Christendom. I have come in contact with many people who they argued with me and said no that she is my wife and I have the right to sleep with her anytime that I want it doesn't stop the presence of God somebody boldly said to me, man of God, you, you got it wrong this time. Oh, he yeah. said, God will even bless that intercourse before the worship. <laughs> but I want us to note something in the book of Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Please, I want us to read it for the sake of those who are still following us. For us to understand that it, it's not the way you see God that he is. Yes. Isaiah 58 verse 55 good. verse 8 and 9. I read. Good. Good. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Who made this statement? Hashem. Yes. Neither are your ways my ways. Neither are your ways my ways. There is another thing. Please. Say it the Lord. Still read on. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. For as the heavens is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher from your ways. So when God said, if a man lies with his wife and they have sexual intercourse, which is a good thing for husband and wife. Mm -hmm. But God said, when you do that, you are considered defied. That is God who said it. 
Chine kebo nye chine ne ku. Obe iso ku no wwa ye kuro ugo ni isi eman. Bobo na gini ya mekoro meko. Ono garo aruruwe anyasi. Then God said. You shall wash your clothes. You and your wife. Yena muye ya gansuwa ku ono. Bath yourself. Saro ono. Then remain unclean till evening. So now, when we say remain unclean till evening, does it mean that you people committed an abomination? It doesn't mean that you've committed sin. But to remain unclean till evening means that you should not go into the holy place or touch or come in contact with any holy item. I don't know whether the message is clear now. You should avoid going into the holy place. In fact, if there is any intercourse on Wednesday and there is a convocation on that same Wednesday, you should avoid that convocation. Okay, the scripture teaches that one can be defied through the emission of semen as in a wet dream. This is another point again. Deuteronomy 23, 10 and 11. Deuteronomy 23, for the sake of those who are following us online and those who don't have this uh, publication, please, I want the reader to read it. Deuteronomy 23, verses 10 to 11, I read. Yes. Verse 10. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanliness, that chanceth him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. 11. Yes. But it shall be when evening comment on, he shall wash himself with water and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Please, I want you to always note, as we continue to read, you will continue to see, and he shall wash himself with water or wash his clothes or they shall wash their clothes. You will continue to say it. Now again, I go now. Get a very born again. I say, "O gasa kuya, mona ha gasa kuya." He gonna have free hand there. Now, before we come into this wet dream, to to aya bia na nkabo ihe ne mena bani. Let's let's flash back to the sexual intercourse between two couple. Kai le chiga ni na kai ku makadi na wunye wera meko. As it concerns our convocation that is coming on Monday, sorry, on Sunday and Monday. Nebo meta. Let me ask the covenant children who are here. As a covenant child listening to this message, remember this message is to sanctify you. The men here, are you supposed to sleep with your wife on Sunday where we'll have the Passover memorial? No. Do you supposed to have anything, anything intercourse? With your wife on Saturday night because the program starts on Sunday. Bam. So it is very clear because we are preparing. Like, that is why I said this is not a motivational sermon, this is a lecture. So we need to understand this so that it will help us to be able to come before Hashem pure. Then, on the issue of wet dream, the men will understand what I mean by wet dream. Wet dream is something like the Bible says, chance set a person by night. We have two types of wet dream. And we're wet dream now, but one is the normal, natural wet dream that may occur in a man. Then there is another wet dream that may come when a young man is having serious attack from demons. Sometimes the man may see himself in the dream having intercourse with a person whom 
he may know or may not know that is a spiritual manipulation from demons. And when the person wakes up, the person discovers that he is already with. That is a different word dream from this natural word dream. But be it natural or an attack, as far as you discover that you have a word dream, in the night, in the morning, the Bible says, you shall wash your clothes, take your bath, and be unclean till evening. But the Bible says, remember, like I said before, why that word unclean is not that you've committed an abomination. It is to enable you understand that you are unfit to touch any holy item or enter into the holy place. Now let's take the third one, Leviticus chapter 15, 16, 17. Leviticus 15, 16, 17, I read. Remember, we are treating defilement through discharge. There are five different things we will treat. Yes. Verse 15, 16. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. Yes. Verse 17. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water. And be unclean until the even. This one is not wet dream again. This one is another kind of semen that may come. Maybe when the person is having any kind of uh, medical condition. Or something that may come by sudden. It happens to some people. But whatever be the case, if you discover that the, the semen has touched any bit, the bed sheet, anything, the Bible said that that thing must be washed. And the person will wash his clothes and bathe. I know some people listening may be saying, does it mean that this man is in this present world or is he coming from the, the past? Because this type of teaching is not obtainable in the church today. People always teach that the blood of Jesus has taken care of all these things. There we sang songs here that says that God changed it now. And I don't believe that Jesus came to destroy the personality of Hashem. Jesus was sent by God. Please, can you read John 6 38 for us? I want us to make a point here before we continue. Peace in the name Hashem. Because some people are trying to bring Jesus to be higher than God. And that is why in various church services, people always bring Jesus higher than God. In fact, because of the false teachings from pastors, some members believe that God is no more in existence. That is Jesus, who is the mighty God. And they're seeing it in different churches. You will hear Jesus, he's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. People sing it. That is the teaching the pastors gave them. So we need to understand it. Let's hear what Jesus said. John 6, verse 38, I yes, read. Yes, yes. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will. I came down from heaven, not to do my own will. Yes. But the will of him that sent me. But the will of he that sent me. Which means, from this statement, Jesus is considered a messenger. If Jesus Jesus is not God. I don't know whether we are still here. So he said, I 
came from heaven not to do my own will. But the will of he that sent me. So let me ask, who sent Jesus? So why are people in the church singing Jesus is a mighty God? <laughs> is it not confusion? Very confused. Okay, so you now see that we need to continue to echo this. I know we have been saying this all the time, but we'll continue to say it. Mm. Because like I said, we are God's witnesses. Because many pastors gave their members teachings that we have a, a being known as God. We have another God known as Jesus. We have another God again knows that known as Holy Ghost. But this teaching is false. Okay, let's continue. We are talking about defilement. How are we going to maintain a cordial relationship with God in this feast of Passover and Unliving Bread? What are the things that we supposed to abstain from? Let me even bring this. Supposing you have to present your offering on Thursday and you discover that Thursday morning, mm. you have a wet dream. What will you do? Will yeah. you now say, after all, Jesus died for me. Mm. Then you now go to the uh, high tabernacle to present. Or will you abstain and obey this law which God gave? We have many members who are new. That is why I'm trying to stress this. I know the old members know this thing. Though some maybe have forgotten. But, but especially for the new members, if you have a wet dream, you have to abstain from the holy place. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. A louder hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about Leviticus 15, 19? Let's take it. Leviticus 15, verse 19, I read. Yes. And if a woman have an issue, Yes. And her issue in her flesh be blood. She shall be put apart seven days. And whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean okay. until the evening. Thank you. So, from all what we've read so far, we've been seeing till evening, till evening, till evening. But now we are seeing an extension for seven days. This, this one is no more about semen. It's about blood. And this is talking about the monthly menstrual period of women. I know this will be strange to the Christians because even the wife of the general overseer sits with her menstrual uh, flow on the so-called platform they call altar. Though we know it's not altar. But they believe that Jesus has, has made it all. So now, but the truth is that our Heavenly Father who sent Jesus. In fact, as time goes on, I will bring a place where Jesus obeyed these laws. I will also show you a place where the parents of Jesus obeyed the laws of God. Okay. So, but on the issue of women in their menstrual flow, the Bible says when a woman is in her menstrual cycle, which is seven days, that the woman will abstain from the holy place. Note again, for a woman to have her normal monthly flow is not an abomination and it is not sin. Because 
It's a blessing. It shows that you are well created. And you function well. In fact, let me tell you, when a woman who is very young, who has not gone to the age of menopause, stops seeing her menstrual flow, it calls for attention. Medical attention. So it, it is a normal thing that every young girl, every woman is supposed to be experiencing experiencing monthly cleansing. But God said, when you are having your monthly period, you shall abstain from the holy place. Okay, let me even ask this question. Where can you, sitting down here now, where can you call a holy place? Somebody say, somebody say the house of God. Somebody says where you have the, where you have the presence of God. Wonderful. I, I'm just trying for you to bring out the house of God which some people call church. Mm. So, when a woman is in her menstrual flow period, but why, you know, does she supposed to attend church service based on what we read now from the Bible? So, that is the problem we have with our Christian brothers and sisters. They said, you come to God as you are. That Jesus died and has perfected your whatever. But, but we are here to correct that notion that these people, they are making a very big mistake. The Lord who created the heavens and the earth the one who sent Jesus Jesus said, when a woman is in her menstrual flow, she should abstain from his own house. That is the house of God. Okay, it has not ended. I, I want us to read Leviticus 12 from 1 to 5. For those who are writing, you can write it down. Leviticus 12 from verse 1 to 5. The scripture reaches, teaches that one can be defied through Childbirth within the specified days of separation. I want us to read it. Yes. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Amen. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, from verse 1 to 5, I read. Yes. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. Yes according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, mm. shall she be unclean. Three, and in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purif purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the day is of her purification be fulfilled. Thank you. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. A louder hallelujah. This is about childbirth. When a woman delivers a child, it's a blessing. It is God that gives children. But he who gives that blessing says to his children, when a woman delivers a male child why okay or a female child why depending on the sex of the baby, either 40 days or 80 days will be considered days of separation it means that the woman will not go into the holy place if it's a female child for 80 days then if he's a male child for 40 days. Now, let me make this thing very clear. It does not mean that because we are talking about defilement or separation, that they are separated from God. 
I know who maka in us gana koko mo ba de gocha or put a rone was gahane be chineke no. If a woman delivers a male child and has separated from the holy place, that woman is still having communication, communion with our heavenly Father because she is doing that in obedience Bam. to the command of God. Let me ask, can angels visit the woman? It, it happened in the Bible. Yeshua was delivered. What's the name of the angel that went and visited Mary? Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel. What about when John was delivered? John. Which angel met the mother? Same angel Gabriel. So that a woman is in the period of separation does not mean that the angels cannot commune with that woman. She is doing that in obedience to the command of God. But where you have problem with God is when you carry that state and move into the holy place. That is where it becomes a problem. Remember, we are preparing to meet with our heavenly Father. These are the things that you have to abstain from. Let me say you gave birth to a baby girl last, last, last month. You are not still fit to attend the Passover. And let me tell you one good thing. If you stay in your house on the day of Passover, because one of the law of Passover is that any person who is defied will not partake of the Passover meal. If you stay in your house on the day of Passover and call upon the name of the Lord, the Almighty who gave this law will still visit you. Because you are doing that in obedience to so his command. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about Leviticus 15, 1 and 2? The scripture teaches that one can be defied through the abnormal discharge, such as could be caused by the infection of a male reproductive system or organ. I want you to read 1 and 2 of Leviticus 15. Leviticus 15 from 1 and 2 I read. Yes. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. Medically, there is a, a, a condition called a syphilis or gonorrhea, depending on the terms. Mm. Uh, sometimes if it happens to a man, the man discovers that he will be having discharge, whitish uh, discharge that may be coming out. That is a medical condition. Now, when it happens like that, the Lord said, that person is defied. The person is not supposed to enter into the holy place. Are we still here? So, if you are having any staff condition of gonorrhea or syphilis or whatever kind of condition and you discover that you are having such experience, you have to go for medical checkup. When you go and take care of yourself, if you are okay medically, you can now be fit to enter into the holy place. Then verse 25 of that Leviticus 15, I want us to read it. Verse 25. Yes. I read. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, 
all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. She shall be unclean. Let me bring in what happened to Yeshua, the man of God. The man of God was moving. The crowd was moving with him. Suddenly he stopped. And he turned around. And asked, who touched me? Peter, a very vocal uh, apostle, Peter said to him, Rabbi, what which type of question? Everybody touched you. Look at the population. People are struggling. There is almost a stampede here. And you are saying who, who touched you? Yeshua said to him, I know what I'm talking about. Somebody touched me. Because power left me. Are you still here? Yes. That was when the woman with the issue of blood. Remember, we read a place now that yes. talked about issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood now went before Yeshua, knelt, and said, "Yes, Rabbi, I am the one." And she said, "I had it in mind that I must struggle, navigate this crowd." To touch the hem of your garment. Because I had faith that if I touch the hem of your garment, I will be made whole. And she said, and I did that. Immediately I touched the hem of your garment. I discovered that my flow ceased. Praise the Lord. Yeshua looked at her Yeshua and said, Osea, said to her, my daughter, Mwa, your faith has saved you. So, look at what God said here. He said, when a woman is having an issue of blood, the woman is considered defiled. Yeshua, as a holy man, Yeshua, the Konyan Sobo, who was in good terms with God, doing the will of God, based on what we read in the book of John 6.38, not, not doing his own will, a man filled with power from on high was moving. And this woman touched him and it affected him. Do you now see that if you, a defied woman, if rocha, come into the holy place, but I never been so, it will cause crisis. If you know, you may be here. Sometimes, when you, if you have entered in a plane uh, and traveled before, you discover that people in the plane will tell you that you switch off your phones. Because if your phone is on, it will be affecting the Flight itself. So they will always walk around to tell you, please kindly switch off your phone in a polite manner. But let me tell you one truth. If you refuse to switch off your phone and they are begging you politely, and they see that you are bent on refusing to switch off the phone. you will be a suspect. Do you understand? Yes. So, God said, if a woman is in her menstrual flow, she should not come into the holy place. If a woman decides to come into the holy place, will it cause peace to reign in the holy place or chaos? Okay, make who do the coke, but all by Gara. Okay, let me even bring this one. We are talking about holy place. I said something about holy place when we started. And I gave an example of the encounter between Moshe and God when God said to him, Take off your shoes, 
for where you are now standing is holy. I also gave a, a, an example of Joshua. Joshua na Moses no to aka ho o se kwa hipa agbo kwa a place is holy if the presence of god is there and at the so mo bu na bebe chi na ke gu se ba ho okay how is it that the so called christians of today have neglected all these places in the commandments of god ke die christian no gba ji we na do iwu chi na ka anya and believe that the servant of god a messenger who came and died mm. And that his death is now what has put an end to every commandments of God. Do you think the coming of Yeshua brought an end to every commandment of God? Matthew 5. Matthew 17. Even 18 to 21. Let, let us hear what Jesus said before we continue. Please. Please. In the name of Hashem. It, it's not in your hand or you can write it. Matthew 5. Yes, from 17. From 17, I read. Yes. Think not that I think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, yes. but to fulfill. Verse 18. The fulfill there, let me explain it. It's not to do away with. The fulfill there is to make it more noble. Do you get it? Yes. Because we, we, for you to understand it is when we read the next verses. And I want us to read it. Yes. Verse 18. Good. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law. Good. Till all be fulfilled. Okay. Do you know when all will be fulfilled? <laughs> do, do, do you know that sometimes people mistake this place to the statement of Yeshua when he died? Mm. That statement of it is finished. finished. And, people say, and people say, okay, yes, it is finished now. That is what the Christians believe. The Christian but the truth, that, the truth is that what God finished that day was the work of Yeshua. Everything about him ended. His prophecy of his coming, his sufferings, everything about his miracles came to an end. On that tree where he was being tormented, he now said, it is finished. Because after his death, the law of God or the laws of God continued. It did not stop. It was after the death of Yeshua that Peter and some other apostles, when they were going for evening service in the temple of Jerusalem, that they met a man that was begging for arms. And Peter, in the name of the Almighty, prayed, and the man received his healing. Yeshua I want you to read verse 21. Verse 21. Yes. Ye have heard that it was said mm. of them of the old. Thou shalt not kill. Yes. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Good. Verse 22. But I say unto you uh -huh. that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Please let me ask you. The one of Yeshua and the law of God. Which one is more difficult here? His interpretation. Because he said you've heard that the law states thou shalt not kill. 
But I'm telling you that if you are angry, you have grudge, you refuse to forgive, you are the same level of a murderer. So Yeshua was trying to magnify as the prophecy was given in the book of Isaiah, mm. magnify the Lord. Okay. Let, let's come back. Let's come back. Let's go to um, Leviticus 13 from 1 to 3. Peace in the name Hashem. Remember, for those who are just joining us, we are trying to explain the state of defilement that will make you not to be fit to appear before the presence of the Lord. Alright, please. Leviticus 13 from verse 1 to 3 I read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy, yes. then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests, and the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. Yes. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. A leper is onye, unclean. Onye benta de gocha. And any person who has leprosy is not supposed to come into the holy place. The person is not supposed to celebrate the feast of Passover and on living bread. Let's like take what uh, happened during the time of Mo Moshe and Miriam. In the book of Numbers chapter 12. Numbers is in If you read it from one to the end, you will see the encounter between Hashem, Moshe, Aaron and Miriam. Because Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, their brother. Miriam and Aaron put on one half of Moses. And they said he went and married a strange woman. It offended God. Then God called three of them. After scolding at them, the Bible says he spat at Miriam. Immediately, she became leprous. The Bible said, when Moshe started begging God to be merciful unto Miriam, God said that Miriam is supposed to be taken to the camp, not inside the camp, but outside the camp, where she will stay because of her defilement and her reproach. Because when the Lord gives a law, he also obeys that law. She was there until when she was made clean. Remember, Miriam was a prophetess. She was working with Moses. But because of that leprosy, she was not able to attend to people again nor touch any holy thing or enter into holy place. Shout hallelujah. Okay, now we are done with defilement through discharge. Let's look into defilement through contact. Before we go into that, I want you to respond to this song. My Lord Sharon. Forevermore, hallelujah. He shall, he shall reign forevermore. Okay, our Lord shall reign forevermore. So, the five men through contact, we are going to start with Numbers chapter 19, verse 1, verse 11, and verse 14. That is what we will read now. Numbers chapter 19. For those who are writing Numbers 19 from verse 1, verse 11, and verse 14. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Amen. Numbers 19, 1, 11, and 14, I read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Yes. Verse 11. 
He that touched the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. Good. Verse 14. This is the law. When a man died in the tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. The scripture teaches that one can be defied by stepping on or touching a grave, the bones of a dead person, or by implication, it's ash, as in the case of cremation. In the book of Numbers 19.16, I want us to just read verse 16. Verse 16. Yes. And whosoever toucheth one that is slain with a sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. Days. So remember that word unclean means that you will not come in contact with any holy thing. So now the Lord is saying here that if a person touch a corpse or you match a grave or you are in a tent or in a house, in a building where somebody just dies suddenly it makes you unclean and unfit to enter into the holy place. So, if you are here for the feast of Passover or you are following us online and you are still preparing to come because Passover is on Monday, if the camp where you will stay, if there are graves there or if there is a grave there, mm. you have to be extremely careful because the Torah states that any grave that you match makes you defy for seven days. This is the more reason why the corporate headquarters decided to bring up an idea of the festival village last time. But some, some regions find it very difficult to Concur with that. The regions we are called, different regional administrators we are called, we showed them portions of places where they will build for their regions so that when they are coming in to Nobi to celebrate the commandment of God, they will abstain from defilement. But after all the effort we made to show them up till now, no single region have started building. Showing that we still need to do more teaching in order for the members of the community of Hashem to come to the level, level Hashem is expecting us to come. Because if you know that defiling the holy place can frustrate your blessing, I don't think you will joke with building a festival village. Because the plan and the design of that festival village is that Everything will be in that festival village. Our market will be there. Kosher market. That place will house everything that is known as kosher. Convenience will be there. And even the apartments for the five people because defilement may come by sudden. A woman may see her menstrual flow before time mm. if she's having a particular medical condition. And there are places meant for people of such uh, states. If you see the prototype of the festival village, you will, you will bless God. But the problem is that we are still waiting for the regions to come. We have not seen any region. But my prayer is that God will open your ways. God will grant you financial breakthrough. Amen.
so that we'll be able to worship God in truth and in holiness. Amen. So we we'll come again on the issue of grave. That is, that is this wrong teaching which I want us to continue to correct. Some people, I don't, know, I don't know where they got their teaching from. They said if a grave lasts for 10 years, it becomes clean. I've been asking the people I hear saying this. Can you give me one quotation in the Bible that says if a grave lasts for 10 years, it becomes clean? They have not given one single quotation. And if you are amongst the people peddling this type of fake news or wrong teaching, know that you are like Rehoboam, sorry, Jeroboam. Because Jeroboam was the person who came and instituted his own law. Yeah. Instead of tabernacle on the seventh month, he fixed his own on the eighth month. A grave remains defiled. He cannot be clean. And what if you make a Even if you believe that, yes, you did not put, you did not build anything there as a monument. As far as you know that that place is a grave. That place is defined. Again, notes for people who bury in the inside their parlor or, or inside the room. Know that that compound is perpetually defied. In our country, Nigeria, there are some people whose tradition is that when a man dies, they bury the man inside the sitting room. Then there are some people who believe that the man must be buried in his own room. And if you ask them the reason why they do this, they said, how can a man build a mansion and you go and bury him under the rain? So that is their own um, uh, belief. But Torah states that when a person tramples a, a grave, the person remains defiled for how many days? Seven days. Then another one is, remember, we are talking about defilement through contact now. We are done with defilement through discharge. Mm. Now, Deuteronomy 14 verse 21, I want us to read it. Also, Leviticus 22 verse 8. But you can start with 22 verse 8 before Deuteronomy. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Leviticus 22 verse 8, I read. Verse 8, I read. Yes. That which dieth of itself or is torn with beasts, Yes. he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. Good. I am the Lord. Deuteronomy 14, 21. Deuteronomy 14, verse 21, I mm -hmm. read. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat. When I, when I spoke about kosher market in our festival village, when they come back, kosher in our festival village, yeah, that, that market is meant to take care of these things. You know, the way the pastors have uh, 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 destroyed the laws of God by, by giving false teachings, it, it has made the members not to understand what is good and what is bad again. Leviticus 22.8, Deuteronomy 14.21 says that you should not eat anything that dies on its Okay, but today there are people who who eat dead dead fowl. If a goat dies, they say no, 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 bring it, bring it. They, they roast it, eat it. There are people who eat. And if you go to the market, that is why we we we, we just pray for God to save us. People who eat out. Hey, 
there are many places where people eat on kosher meal. I na yo chineke konyela ya konwe ebe di chi gejeri eni oboro anu ora anu ki neeri. Because there are some people who who sells uh, meat that will not allow the meat to waste if it dies on its own because mm. you are not there in their kitchen. Mm. They will they will roast it if it's a ram or goat and prepare it. Oh, when they are no hagabo on walk on or be us now if I am an akoni for yeah 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 so, but as covenant children, note that you are not supposed to eat anything that die. Okay. Now, I want us to read the book of um, Leviticus 15, verse 18. We'll begin to round up very soon because we don't have much time today. Okay. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Amen. Leviticus 15, verse 18, I read. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. A woman who lies with a man, we, we touched about husband and wife earlier on, and the seed of copulation touches the bed where they lie upon or their clothes. The Bible said both the bed, their clothes, they themselves will be what? Defied. So please, for those who are married, I'm not talking about people who are still making terrible mistakes in the name of fornication. Those who are married, please make sure that if you have any contact with your wife, your foam, sorry, your, your bed sheet, your clothes, if you are preparing to go to the holy place, must be washed. Ana me ku wenye ndi nu go di na nwunye oburu mu okoro bia na obu na nwoke na nwa ye meko faga asa we ha sa be shit ha sa aru ha sa. Okay. Now let's move to page uh, 30 and um, let's look into Leviticus chapter 12 from verse 1. This is where I want to highlight something about Yeshua like I said when we started. Start from verse 1. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Peace in the mighty name Hashem. Amen. Leviticus 12 from verse 1. Yes. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Good. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have, have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. Yes. According to the days of the separation of her infirmity, shall she be unclean. Good. Three. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Four. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying I want be you fulfilled. to note that word. She shall touch no hallowed thing. She shall not come into the sanctuary. Remember, the Bible times, when you hear sanctuary, or when you see sanctuary, is still talking about what people in this our modern time sees as house of God. Yes. Do you get it? Yes. So, a woman who just gives birth to a baby boy or a baby girl is not meant to go into the let me use the modern word, the church. Let's leave the word sanctuary so that people who are Christians will understand what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. Now, I, I want us to, to look into the book of Luke. I said something about Jesus, whom people are saying he is a God. <laughs> uh, and I said, no, the same Jesus, when he was born, his parents obeyed this law which we just read now in the book of Leviticus chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5. Though we stopped at number 2. Mm -hmm. But if you read it to 5, you will see the requirements. The requirements is that if a woman completes her time of separation, she shall bring a lamb and a dove. But if the woman or the family is poor, they shall bring two turtle doves. 
That is what the law says. That is what God says. So let's see what happened when Jesus was born. That is why I want us to go to the book of Luke. Uh, I want you to read verse 21 to 24, chapter 2. Luke. The book of Luke 2, 21 and 24, I read. Yes. Verse 21. And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child. Good. His name was called Yeshua. Remember, circumcision will be only on males. We read it here. I it must much. be only on males. Okay, so okay. And when Jesus was born as a male child, he was circumcised after how many days? Eight, Eight days, according to the law. Jesus, they can walk in, but in case at all, for, for those who believe that he came, immediately he came into the world, he destroyed everything about God's commandment. Okay, please go down a bit. Okay, I read again. And when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, yes. his name was called Jesus. Good. Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Verse 22. Okay. And when the days of our purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. There are two things I want us to correct here. We may not have enough time, but let me just highlight it because of the people following us online and some of the people who are new here. Um, his name was called Jesus by, by an angel is something that we need to look into again because his name was never Jesus. Remember, the, the Torah was written in Hebrew, but the New Testament was first written in what? Greek. Greek. Okay, now, so Jesus came in the New Testament era. Do you get it? Yeah. So the angel who came and spoke to Mary or spoke to Joseph did not speak to them in Greek. He spoke to them in which language? Hebrew. So his name is Yeshua. You don't even need to go to the Bible. You just goggle or you ask the people who live in the present day Israel, yes. they will tell you better that they don't know who is Jesus. His name is Yeshua. But in case you jam a person, because there is something about Israel which I want to highlight here. Okay. I have been to Israel. If you come into the land of Israel, uh, you see different people in Israel. Israel, Israel. You will see Christians in Israel. The Christian no Israel. You will see Jews in Israel. The Jew, no, yeah? You will you will see. The, the Muslims in Israel. The Muslim in Israel. You will see the Hindus in Israel. The Hindus, no? All these people, they are there. They are in there no? But Israel is Israel. Man, Israel is Israel. And the Jews in Israel knows that these people are foreigners. They also know that these um, religions are foreign. Religions. But apart from whatever means they are using to make their money, um, Israel believes that when you come to their nation for pilgrimage, mm. you are a blessing to them. So, as far as you come into Israel, whatever thing you believe in, there must be a tall guard. That will, that will lead you. So, tourism is one of the source of income. So, if you come into Israel, in the place known as Jerusalem, on the Saturday known as Sabbath day, mm. every place will close down Ebene, for ne? Sabbath. You dare not and what if you can make, make it open up your factory or to do he whatever. Una, una, because that is the, the main uh, uh, um, capital known from the days of old. Okay, so 
When, when you go to Israel and you jam a Christian there, he will tell you the blood of Jesus is good. Jesus. Do you get it? Yes. If you go to Israel and jam a Muslim, if we're a Muslim, he will tell you that Muhammad is good. If you go to Israel and jam a Hindu, he will tell you about their own God. It depends on who you meet in Israel. But if you go to Israel and meet a core Jew, he will tell you about the Torah. Do you get it? Yes. And we ourselves here, we are Jews in diaspora. I am one of the Jews on Ambassa. We are here to explain the truth. I know back, I can watch it just show. as it is written in the scripture. Just as Hashem, our Heavenly Father, has given it to us. So when we say here that Yeshua was presented before the priest according to the law of Moses, that is the second correction I want us to make. And I want us to read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, please. I want us to make a point there. Mm. I want you to read from verse 1 and 2. Moses did not give any law. If I don't explain it and you hear as it is written in the book of Moses, mm -hmm. you will say, uh -huh. did no, I not won't. say this pastor is a mosaic pastor? <laughs> so please read from verse 1 and 2 after you read Ezra chapter 7 verse 6 also. Yes. The book of Deuteronomy 10, verse 1 and 2, I read. Good. At the time, the Lord said unto me, These two stones, two tables of stones, like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. Two. And yes. I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. Let me ask, who will write on the tables? Hashem. Hashem. The Ten Commandments, which Christians know about, mm. how many tablets are there? Or we are there? Two. Two. Okay, good. So, who wrote on them? Hashem. Please don't be angry. Let me ask you again. Who broke those two tablets? Moses. Out of anger. Yes. Now, the Lord said to him again, go and carve two tables as the one I made before and bring. Let me write on them as I wrote on the former. Chinegasi right. Moses, Okuma Heko and Kemu Wempigata, Yega Alosegabon, Yeja Capeta and Kume, Buria Bogotanuku, Kamuma Buchineke, the Quarek and then and Kembo. So Moses did that, Moses wrote wrote it, me, yeah. and Hashem wrote on the Two tables of stones. Hashem, when they were we were, they called their number. Gave it to Moses to bring down. When you Moses go, what about that? When Moses stayed before the presence of the Almighty, it became a different thing from the first encounter. The first encounter, Hashem said to him, Moses, leave here, go down. Your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, they have gone astray. Moses argued with God, but at the end of the day, he saw that you cannot argue with God but, because God can never lie. But on the second one, when Moses came down, what happened? Something spectacular happened. Moses came down and the people of Israel could not behold the face of Moses again. The Bible said that his face was shining and the people, when they saw him, they ran away. They went and created something. I don't know how they made it, but it was like a max. And they brought it. Moses now wore it before they were able to commune with him. Because of the Shekinah glory of the Almighty. He spent 40 days. God wrote on those two tables of stones. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I say you should read Ezra. The reason why I want us to read is because if you Listening to the first place he read, he said, according to the law or the book of Moses. Mm. But Ezra was able to explain it well. Please, verse 6. Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7, verse 6, I read. Yes. This, Ezra went up from Babylon. Good. And he was a ready, he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given 
And the king granted him all his requests. It's okay. So, he was a ready scribe. But he did not end it the law of Moses. He was able to perfect that statement. By saying, which the Lord God of Israel So, for those who may be saying, uh, this uh, pastor is talking about uh, the olden days things, he's a mosaic pastor. No. Moses did not give any law. And Jesus, when he came, because I'm using the name Jesus so that Christians will understand me. Yes. He came as a messenger. Jesus, he did not come as a God. God sent him on an errand. Okay. In conclusion, let us finalize by reading the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23. From verse 12 to 13. I will be running up with this quotation. Peace in the name Hashem. Amen. Deuteronomy 23 from verse 11. Okay. To 13. Okay, I read. read from verse 12. From verse 12 to 13 I read. Yes. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp. Whither thou shalt go forth abroad. Yes. 13. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon. And it shall be, when thou will ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. Good. He said, when thou goest out. Remember, we are talking about the days of Moses. Yes. Civilization, as we have today, was not then. So, he said, when you go take equipment like shovel mm. or whatever thing they have in those days and dig a place where you can ease yourself. After excreting, then you cover it to avoid offensive order. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let us be able to expand it a bit. He said something because the Lord your God moved around your camp to fight for you. Today, where is your camp? Your house is your camp. Your office is your camp. Any place you find yourself, where you stay, either you are squatting with somebody, is your camp. Then you come to Nobi here, where we are preparing to celebrate the feast, we have many camps. Remember, we are talking about the state you find yourself before you will be able to commune or be fit to appear before the Lord. You, you must make sure that your camps are clean. As far as we are preparing to meet Hashem, cleanliness is next to what? Godliness. Some people are not clean. They see people who are trying to be clean mm. as people who are trying to show off. But let me tell you, if you are having body odor, the angels will be far from you. I know some people will be saying, wait in this man they talk. I'm telling you the truth. God Hates offensive order. We just read it now. Proper hygiene. You need it before you start talking about Matthew 5. There are some people who don't brush. In the morning, when they talk to you, you won't, in fact, I don't know how to put it, but it will be so offensive that you may not be able to stand it. So, how will the angels be able to listen to you? Or you think that God does not perceive order? Shout hallelujah. What about those people whom when they pass or they come into a room, the, 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 the atmosphere will change? There are some people 
who don't know what to do. But let me tell you, this thing that I'm talking about will still affect you spiritually, apart from physically. It is very important for you to know that you begin to use roll-on. People apply it. And apart from that, you always shave. Uh -huh. I don't know whether we are still here. <laughs> because when, when, we, when we come together in the name of the Lord, Look at the population at the height of Banaka. During the Feast of Passover, we always have overflow. Even at Passover now, people feel the height of Banaka to the brim. You go to the overflow, you see people there. Then you go to Festival Arena, you still see people there. With such a population, you are supposed to make sure that you are clean. Because the population, if everybody decides to be dirty, let me tell you, that congregation will be the congregation of the dead. I'm telling you the truth. But if you try your possible best, because you are the God we are talking about has not changed. I don't know why pastors lied. And it's affecting the members. Today. We are talking about the God who told Solomon. Solomon, build me a temple. It is God who gave the specification of that temple. Bam. And God said, for those who say that God does not want all these things, He just wants you to be clean in your heart. That is what some people are saying. So God said to Solomon. You see this temple, when you finish the building, the finishing of this temple, everything you do, overlay it with gold. That is the God we are talking about. God said that the attire of the high priest will be the most expensive attire. That is what God said. And he wants you, when you are coming before him, okay, why did he say that if Moses, if they said they want to see me, let them go and bathe. Themselves. Themselves. Wash their clothes. I, I said something here that we should note the places we are reading about bathe yourself, wash your clothes. Mm -hmm. The reason why I highlighted those places is for you to understand that God is interested in you when you are clean. He wants you to be clean as you come to him. It is very important for us to know that. If you are a pastor or a member, whomsoever you are, no matter your level, make sure that you pro practice proper hygiene. Make sure you always shave. Make sure you brush your teeth nah, nah, uh, every morning and every night. Nah, so, some, some people eat fufu in the night, eat soup, and just go and lie down. No, it is wrong. It is proper hygiene that when you finish eating in the night, before you go to bed, you do what? You brush. It, it will even help you medically. Okay, so please let's try our possible best then make sure that as you come before the almighty this feast wash your clothes don't come to the high tabernacle without bedding in the festival arena because it's morning program early morning program some people wake up and just jump out to stand claiming that they are we are doing morning uh, uh, devotion. Mm. See, your morning devotion outside there, inside the festival arena, will be incomplete without you being clean. The first period is not a, a relaxation period. It is a time to serve God, to worship God. He said, you worship me with all your strength, all your might. 
This seven days will be a power pack seven days. The Shekinah glory of the Almighty will be revealed. In order for you to get every bit of the action, please make sure you practice proper what? Hygiene. My prayer is that the Almighty who has invited us, who is able to do all things, will bless each and every one of us. He will continue to make a name for himself. Everybody here and those following us online, the great God of Israel will touch you. Amen. Your coming before him will not be in vain. Amen. The mighty one of the universe shall grant you your heart desire. Amen. In fact, after this feast of Passover and unliving bread, there must, I'm not saying there may, there must be a great revival in your life. Amen. So shall it be. In the mighty name Hashem. Amen. Shalom. Lekulam. Shalom. Thank you so much. Um, Closing prayer. E muma he rela, o rela, o rela. E muma he rela, u muchi neke, ya ye ya eke ne, a janga biga. Everybody. E muma he rela, o rela, sita grope. Can we have the person? E muma he rela. Umuchineke Bianye ya ekene Ajanga biga Mema wewela Orwela Orwela Mema wewela Umuchineke Bianye ya ekene Ajanga biga That is one more song Fero Pharaoh rap on the kahana. He says, Pharaoh, leave my people to go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, rap my de kahana. And Romanus, I had a voice from heaven. Let my people go. 
I had them for some above, let my people go. Pharaoh, 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 let my people go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. I had them for some above, let my people go. I had the voice from my book. Let my people go. Put your hands together for our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Our Lord is good. All the time. Before we say the closing prayer, I want us to support the Beneron ministry. Today is the uh, first day of the festival lecture. I want you to be amongst the people that will claim the first blessing. So please, I will not go too high. If there is anybody here in this house who will use 5,000 Naira to support the spread of the gospel, please kindly come to this basin and drop your offering. But if you don't have cash, you want to write your name, we have our Shaliak standing. Our Shaliak here will write your name. Shaliak Our brother has just dropped cash. When the Lord okay, bless you. Okay. He is the first person to give. Dr. Anna, may God make you the first. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. Can we have people that will support with 2,000 Naira? 2,000 Naira. 2,000 Naira. 2,000 Naira. You are giving to support our elder. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May Hashem bless you. Do we have more people for 2,000? Okay, while you are still making up your mind, 1,000 Naira, please, can you join? Well, 1,000, Debbie Abba. Or go with your phone. Yeah. 1,000 Naira also. A thousand Naira, all those coming out to give, may the Lord bless you. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. Can we increase our clapping, please? <laughs> Hallelujah. May the King of Glory bless you. Amen. Okay, as the remaining people are coming for 1,000 Naira, please, 500, can you join 500 them? 500 Naira, 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 500, join them. May the Lord open your ways as you give to honor him. Amen. We give to honor Hashem. 500 Naira. People are still coming out. As the final people are coming out, if you have 200, please, can you join? 200 Naira, 200 Naira to claim your blessings. May the great God of Israel grant you the blessings of the feast. May he grant you total redemption. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. 200 Naira. In fact, 100 Naira join. join. 100 Naira beer. We are wrapping up. 100 Naira. Even 50 Naira join. Well, 50 Naira get back We want everybody to partake in this. I talk. I can in a me. 50 Naira. May the King of Glory bless you. Amen. Okay. 15 Naira. May the Lord bless you. Let, let's let's um, seal the offering. Can you see? Can we yeah. have seven people that will see this offering on behalf of the community of Hashem. Many of our members are still on their way coming. Can we have seven people to see this offering with a thousand Naira each? It's just bring your one thousand and stand here on behalf of the whole community. Just stand. Don't put it. Just stand with your one thousand. Don't put it. Stand with it. We are going to pray on behalf of the whole community. Our brothers and sisters are still on their way coming. Some people will use flights. Some will use a road. Some will come by the sea. We we'll have three people standing, remaining, remaining four people. We we'll just need seven. Seven people. You are standing, you are standing as a champion. You are standing as a champion. Seven champions. We have 
four people, five, number five is coming, number six is coming. Okay, yeah, number seven is coming. Can we put our hands together for Hashem? Put your hands together for Hashem. Our Lord is good. Okay, now, remember we are praying on behalf of the whole community. Yes. So everybody will now stand. Everybody will now stand. The people who are standing before the basin are the champions, champions standing on our behalf. We are supporting them, but you can't support, support them empty-handed. Bring out something and hold it. Whatever you are, no matter the amount, you can hold a thousand naira as I'm holding. You can hold 500. You can hold 200. You can hold 100 You can hold 100 naira. Any amount, just hold something. Hold something. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Hashem is your name. Hashem is your name. Is your name. Hashem is your name. Is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Hashem is your name. Father, your children are standing before the basin. We all are standing and supporting them as we are all standing on behalf of all the members of the community of Hashem worldwide. Begging you, Father, please accept our little token. Bless the community of Hashem. Because Israel. Not only us, but bless all covenant children. Amen. All over the world. Amen. That your children in this season of redemption yes. will experience your power. Amen. Let this season bring total peace Amen. unto us, your children. Amen. Bring total liberation. Amen. Bring multiple open doors. Amen. That after the celebration of your feast, we, your children, will go back home rejoicing. Amen. People will see your Shekinah glory in our lives and know that we have communed with you, Amen. the great Adonai of Israel. Please accept us. Amen. Accept our offering. Amen. For in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Seven loud amen. 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 Drop your offering.